Welcome back everybody, Rudy with Alpha Investments. Ah, how's everyone doing today? We are doing a follow-up video on Conspiracy 2. It's been exactly a year. August of 2016, Conspiracy 2 came out. My ridiculous self bought 250 booster boxes, paid $77 a booster box. It is. We are at 11 months since release, approximately. And I've been wanting to do a recap video let everybody know the risks, the positive, and the downside of doing this kind of thing when things don't exactly go as good as you think. So, this has been a very interesting case study for me because I've handled this set a little differently than I do the rest of the basic core sets or block sets or expansions that would come and go. I was a little bit more strenuous, picky, particular... And I pegged the prices a little harder, so I, I, I wasn't really as aggressive on the pricing. I'm trying to make the pricing not as fire sale, garbage fire type thing. So, anyways, let's go into it. I want to show you. This is, I'm going to show you the cards I have. I'm going to physically show you guys all the cards that are left. So, before we do, remember, started with that. Spent nineteen thousand two hundred and fifty dollars on two hundred and fifty booster boxes. So I spent about twenty grand. It's been eleven and a half months. I am currently. Negative three thousand two hundred and eleven dollars and thirty six cents. So I'm negative thirty two hundred dollars right now. Now, fun statistics for everybody. I got it all because everyone's curious. So when the set first launched and everything all the way today, I've had two thousand seven hundred and twenty customers buy conspiracy single cards from me. I average currently about five customers a day. Uh, during the first few months of release, I average twenty to thirty customers a day. Then the mid-term, kind of the mid-time, last uh, six-month range, I was averaging eight to ten customers a day. Now the conspiracy is aged. I am currently averaging five customers a day. So I'm still getting about five transactions a day selling single cards of conspiracy online, of which probably about maybe one or two of those five are rare card transactions. The other two or three are common and uncommon purchasing or, you know, one to five dollar purchase range. So that's where we stand. I want to show you guys now, next, I'm going to go, I'm going to actually physically show everybody the cards I have left. And I know there's a handful of you guys out there like to kind of crunch the numbers and see, okay, how, how is it really doing? Although, I had never turned a profit and I'm still out $3,200 on the set after almost a year. It's the worst performing set I've had financially. But, with that being said, I have all the foils from 250 booster boxes or 9,000 booster packs. I have all the foil cards, and I have a ton of product left. So in reality, while I may have still be out $3,200, you can look at it another way. Uh, I currently spent $3,200 to show you all the cards I'm gonna show you in this video that I still have left. So there's two ways to kind of look at that. So I have all the foils. Next, I'm gonna show you all the rares and mythics that are left. And of course, I have probably 1500 to 1800 of every single common card uh, except garbage fire I've sold a couple hundred and there's a couple other common cards like murder and uh, there's another red card there's a couple of them that actually have been selling quite regular on a regular basis so all right so you guys ready that's where it is I want some people to kind of run the numbers tell me what you guys think personally I'm not really upset about it because I feel like I actually haven't done too bad. When you guys see how many rares and how many mythics and how all the foils, the product that I still have, and then you put that product against $3,200 that I spent, it doesn't seem too bad. So let's go through this. I think it's going to be kind of cool. I think you guys are going to like it. Okay. So these are all the rare cards left. It, it's Okay. Let me kind of put a perspective for you guys. Each one of these stacks... Um, is about 150 of the same rare. So to kind of give you guys an idea of the volume, each one of these, that's a, you're looking at about 150. That, that size stack is 150 of the same rare. So as you can see, the Firex in the arena, I've sold probably about half, you can see. So about 75 have sold, and I still have about 75 left. So certain cards like this, I was not willing to drop it to like a dollar during a lot of that kind of panic Everybody wanted to really sell it all immediately. Um, recently, some other cards have kind of started weirdly selling. So again, the black rare cards, again, we have a lot of these cards. And that was a problem with Conspiracy. They just don't sell. There's no demand for it. The market just kind of shrugs and says, we don't want these. That's kind of the problem with a lot of those. 
And God help the conspiracy cards in this set. I mean, this is about three to four hundred of each of the conspiracy rares in this set. I, they've barely ever sold because, again, there's no actual organic demand. Nobody actually really wants the cards. And that is the problem with Conspiracy 2. While the expected value is actually surprisingly not too bad, there's just a lot of cards that just don't really have a purpose. So, again, gold rares. You can see about 150 of each one left. Probably about 30 of the exotic orchards have been sold there, as you can see. Um, again, the rare land, Throne of the High City, pretty much the only other rare land. Most of them are still here because, again, there's just not a real lot of demand for this stuff. People just don't really want it. You go to the artifacts, you got pretty much Horn Agreed. Past that, I mean, there's only three artifact rares, by the way. I mean, you've got an equipment and a horror that really, there's just, nobody wants it. There's no real demand. The cards don't have any good places or homes in any really good decks or people, you know. So, again, Horn Agreed. I could probably fire sale these out if I drop the price maybe 99 cents or something crazy like I've seen some other people do. But I'm really just not willing to do that. It's the same thing with the arena. So I want to point that out. Next, the greens. The green rares. Not really much difference. As you can see on these green rares, you know, the full probably 160 there. You've got, God, really, all these things. The, only, the stampede was selling for a little while for like about $2 a card. And I still have it probably around that price range. And now it's just kind of stalled out. I don't know if there were some people speculating on it. So again, if you look at, you know, these are, I mean, look at this. Almost every rare in the set, again, there's just nobody wanting it. And then you go to the reds, again, nobody really wants the old uh, elemental. This, I mean, Skyline has a little bit because it's, it's dragon. There's always going to be people that want dragon. Uh, I think, if I want to say, I think the Goliath was from like M13. It just, you know, it's, a, it's just a seven, I mean, it just... Grenzo is the only rare in the reds, as you can see. If you look at that, you can actually see I've probably sold a good, probably almost 100. That actually sells on a frequent, regular basis. And even the old, uh, the violence also. Those are the two reds that actually do have some demand for us. Some people actually buy those pretty regularly. But again, Charm Breaker, nothing. The rest of the reds, nothing. Burning Wish was another one. Reprint from an old set. You know, people were crazy. It used to be like a $5, $10 card. And, you know, I've got it at, what, $2? And, you know, there's just not... <laughs> some of these old cards get reprinted and it just shows that the reason they're expensive is due to rarity, not due to man. So, Burning Wish is another good example of that. Uh, you come over to the blues, same thing. Human Wizard, useless. Mines, useless. Desertion's probably the only rare card that actually has some actual synthetic... I don't even know why I said the word synthetic. Actual demand. The rest, I mean, you know, that was sell it sells for about a buck fifty pretty frequently on eBay. Followed Footsteps, barely ever sells. Again, Keeper, nobody wants to keep you. Uh, Crescent Moon is an old school, I think, Kamigawa reprint. That does actually sell every once in a while. Again, nothing major. Sphinx, good lord, we don't need any more flipping Sphinx. Stunt Double does sell on a regular basis a little bit. I just keep the price a little bit elevated. So you can see, that's that's about it. Now, last but not least, you got White. Again, Hallowed, nothing. 100 hit, nothing. Face Reward, reprint from M13, eh. Vanguard, nobody cares. Another reprint, not really that demand for it. Protector of the crown, nobody needs to protect anything because no one wants the damn crown. Spirit, again, no demand. So as you can see, you know, the mass amounts of these cards. So those are all the rares. I wanted to kind of go over that with you guys. You can do the math. I mean, you can see if, if each stacks approximate number of rares, I mean, it really gives you guys an idea of how many rares I still have. So again, I'm out $3,200. And this is all the rares that are left. So next, all right, let me just zip over here. Let me get the Mythics. Okay, and I don't know if you guys remember, these are the, these are the Mythics. These are all the Mythics I got left. So, ugh, Avatar of the Woes, right? I know, right? It's like, ugh. Um, I know, I know. These have been selling very strongly lately because they're like nine bucks a piece. I can, I've been selling these for about nine a piece. These are all I have left. That's been pretty, pretty hot. Queen Marchessa still sells pretty regularly, four bucks a piece. Uh, Subterranean Alligator, I don't really know what the deal is with that guy. I'll be pretty straightforward with you guys. It's just kind of, uh, I have a ton. There's probably about 40 of these, maybe. Platinum Angel, probably about maybe almost 50, maybe more. And, of course, the Conspiracy Mythics. Just like the regular Conspiracy card, uh, I think... Almost 200 
of the hemp, 200 of those, and I think like 175 of each one of those mythics. So in case you guys, you know, are lazy, if you want to check out all the foils I have left, here's the foil mythics. Um, okay, and this is this has been done before. I'm going to put a link in the description if you guys want to see all the actual foil rares. Oh, what's with the lighting? It's like crazy bright, isn't it? Does that look really bright to you guys? Let me, let me a little better. That was weird. I was like, dude, that looked crazy. Okay, and again, these are ones I've showed in the past, but you guys can see, you know, and I know you guys remember a lot of these. I did a video on it a long time ago. Three of the foil, remember, these mythics do not go in the same slot as a regular rare mythic, if I recall correctly. They're in a different slot, so these usually don't count towards your foil mythic and your regular mythics. Only two of the foil avatar woes in 250 boxes, I know, right? Two platinum mangers, I guess that's good. Uh, I have to admit, I was happy with that. The old Sanctum, four of them. And again, Queen Marchessa, four. I know, the world famous Leovold at this point, I know. Uh, three foil mythic uh, Leovolds are pulled. Three ghosts, uh, Kaya Assassins. I still think the uh, the ghost thing, it's, it's still kind of cool. Four uh, Duretti's. Uh, only one, I know. 250 boxes, only one. I know, right? Isn't that ridiculous? Only one foil. Nice place set of show and tell foils. Nice bunch of five alligator tremors, which there's still been, a, from this day, all the way from release, there's always been speculation that this guy was going to do something. And it never really, really, nothing ever happened. Two foil berserks, and of course, four of the old heart of the wild mythics. So those are the foil mythics. Kind of just let everybody know what's what. That's what I pulled from the 250 boxes. And if you want to see all the foil rares I pulled, the foil uncommons, link is in the description below if you guys want to see that older video. No point in going through it a second time. You guys already done it. I just wanted to show what was left. I wanted to reinforce that I still had this stuff. And, it, you know, it's August 2017. You know, some people were kind of always wondering, well, does Rudy actually have it? Or does he just say he has it? So I want to actually show you. Those are all the mythics that are, you can see in the old video from a year ago. Still have the exact same ones. These are all the mythics that are left. Obviously, I have about uh, about four or five hundred of every uncommon. I think I've sold a couple of them, like the Ghostly Prism. And, of course, the Serum Visions have probably sold about 200 of each. And that's about it. Add it all up together. Tell me what you guys think. This is Rudy with Alpha Investments. That is an update with Conspiracy 2. The point of this, again, once again, to show everybody... There is risk when you open a substantial amount of products that sometimes things do not go as planned. And I know there's already people freeze phrasing the video and saying, okay, well, if Rudy's down 3,200, he has that many rares, he has that many mythics, and he has all of these foils, I'm not sure if Rudy's really down any money at all. Well, you're probably right, and especially as another year goes by. If I can get that number to break even or even plus 5, 10%, and I can still have this, it'll be working out good. Until then... I appreciate all the support. Patrons appreciate everything. I hope you guys are having a splendid day. Rudy with Alpha Investments. And as always, may your taco always remain firm, meaty, happy. And of course, uh, if you guys get a second, tell Kaya I said hi.